The Paranormal I define myself as a native realist, and I sure believe in physics and chemistry. But when it comes to the paranormal, I uh, have my own way of thinking, like uh, everybody, I guess. Even I do not believe in ghosts that appear uh, in form of a hovering bedsheet or something. I do believe that not everything in our universe can be explained so far. Um, black holes and uh, antimatter, for example, still are a uh, pretty recent discovery. So why shouldn't there be more things we can't explain today? I believe that this way of thinking keeps my mind open and leaves space for interpretation. While I am not a ghost freak uh, and I do not go on ghost hunts, neither I do any kind of dark energy r rituals or such things, but the idea of building a ghost detector still was in my mind for some months now. To detect paranormal activities there is no real recipe. We don't know what ghosts are, and if they even exist. And if so, do they have any influence on radio frequencies or can they even move objects around? We don't know. There are plenty of ways um, that people claim how to detect a spirit. A pioneer of detecting ghosts and proved the existence of the paranormal was Harry Price. He was born in 1881 in London and ultimately died in 1948. He left behind a whole library of magical literature, including extensive information he collected over the years. Price is best known as one of the leading and most controversial researchers and authoritative voices on all things paranormal. His popularity gained predominantly through his work investigating well-known haunted houses and uh, exposing fake spiritualists, during a time when sciences and the paranormal in general were at the peak of uh, public interest. He used equipment like strings with bells on it, chalk dust and uh, photo cameras for his work. Nowadays, as since the late 2000s ghost hunting became a thing again, we sure have other and maybe even more evaluated ways to measure things like electromagnetic fields, radio waves and motion. Therefore I came up with the idea to build the ultimate ghost detector. And not enough with that, I will try to integrate a microwave motion detector and so make it basically a ghost trap. Not exactly the thing Egon had invented in the mid 80s, but something that can automatically react to motion of all kinds, even through walls. I want to integrate a spirit box, what essentially is nothing more than a FM or AM radio receiver that scrolls through the frequencies without stopping at any peak levels. Also I need to integrate a EMF meter that detects electromagnetic fields and a negative ion detector. Additionally I want to add a green laser grid and a simple analog magnetic compass. All in all this thing combines six single detection modes that for now you need to carry around separately for your ghost hunts and it combines it to a single handheld all-in-one device. So first of all I made me an idea how this thing should look like and I already have a picture in my head. This thing of course. It is known as the PKE meter out of the movie Ghostbusters from the mid 80s. So the basic design is right but uh, for me I want to add a little steampunk look to it. I want the body of the apparatus to be made out of wood and there should be some brass pipes and antennas sticking out of it that actually have a purpose. Now I hunt down all the components I need for this project. I will be using uh, two Arduinos, a FM radio shield, uh, lots of switches and knobs, some LEDs and other components such as some transistors for the analog EMF meter. A list of the components can be found in the description, uh, such as uh, the exclusive Arduino code I will give you for free. For me as a total Arduino beginner, it took about a week to write this code, so I would appreciate if you consider to subscribe uh, to my channel when you download the code. Also you may consider to become a Patreon if you want more videos about projects you can build at home. Every dollar helps me to make projects like this possible. At the end of this new video series about the ultimate Ghost Detector, I will give away a free EMF detector with personal engraving. If you watch closely, there will be a ghost appearing somewhere in the next Ghost Detector related videos. Write the exact time of the ghost appearing in the comments and you may win a pocket size EMF ghost detector. I will announce the winner in the following video. Alright, now I will try to explain as good as I can how to build this thing. Um, but as I am not an electrician, neither a Arduino genius, I built this thing my way. 
So sure, there are things people will roll their eyes on and point with their finger at me, but um, that's the way I do it, and I can tell you the result works pretty good. Today we start with a very small, simple component, the analog EMF detector and the negative ion detector. And here is what we need. We need uh, three BC547 transistors, two 5mm red LEDs, not the high power clear ones, but the red ones a 47 ohm resistor and something we can use as antennas. I honestly borrowed this uh, tutorial from biglife.com who came up with this conjunction sheet so I linked his video in the description below as well. He makes awesome videos if you're into disassembling electronics and uh, usually I don't miss any of his new uploads. This is the drawing of what we are soldering together here. What we are basically making is building an extremely high gain transistor that is so sensitive uh, that every so little disturbance causes the transistor package to pass through current. Soldering the EMF detector together is quite easy, even when you're a beginner. Make sure to insulate the leads as good as you can to avoid them uh, from shorting out later on as all the components will be stacked pretty tightly inside of the casing. The second LED will be soldered into the circuit backwards. That's because we use it as a gate, imagine the second LED as if it was a 1 mega ohm resistor. For my EMF antenna I found an old halogen bulb uh, holder from a lighting kit I bended the two leads 90 degrees and added some shrink tube to both. The two terminals are perfect to hook up the circuit and the two rubber sleeves are only for cosmetic reasons to cover the holes I need to drill into the housing. Only thing left to do is to add two cables to power this unit. I keep them long enough to be able to cut them to size later when all the other components are coming together. The LED should glow when electrostatic charges are present. I achieved readings from about uh, 6 feet away. Now the first detection circuit is done, uh, let's move over to the next. For the antenna of my negative ion detector I got a bit creative. I used the spool of an old relay, a metal bell out of an old phone and bended some brass tubing over the handle of a screwdriver. After screwing everything together I glued everything down permanently with some epoxy. For the electronics we need a 10 segment LED bar graph, one PCB strip board, one 220k ohm resistor, five 22 ohm resistors and another red LED that again will be soldered in backwards. Here I am grounding all the bar graph diodes together. Then to the positive side I add the resistors. Even you can see 10 resistors I ended up uh, bridging every two bars together. So two bars light up for one detection step. Therefore you only need five resistors. Now I solder in the 220k resistor to a free spot on the PCB. Followed by a thick antenna cable, you could use coaxial cable as well. Now our backwards LED, positive lead to ground and negative lead to the other side of the resistor that will be wired to a analog input of our Arduino. As everything is soldered together now, I try my luck with the first part of the code. I adapted some Arduino sheets I found online to my purpose and changed the in and outputs to the corresponding channels. And there you have it. This thing gives me some pretty interesting readings when I walk around with it. For some reason you can also detect pipes that run through your walls when the water inside of it is running. Pretty interesting. Hmm. Alright, this should do it for the first episode and for the first two components of our ultimate ghost detector that will help us reading out EMF concentrations and accumulations of negative ions. 
In the next episode I will build the FM radio based spirit box, so stay tuned and be frightened. I hope you enjoy it, please leave me a spook in the comments below, a thumbs up and subscribe. Until then, see ya!